Okay, so uh, there's still people arriving, actually, three more people. So I'll just say hello to them. Whoever's just arriving, uh, very warmly welcome. And uh, if you are new to the group, you are also <laughs> warmly welcome. And today is special. My name is Venchanda, for those who don't know me and who are new to the group. And normally I run this, uh, these online sessions. We do the meta meditation probably twice a month. And uh, Venerable uh, Upeka has been with me for a while. So you've had her leading the last one, I think, and leading a few for us. But today we're really blessed with a third bikini. And this is Ayananda Bodhi with a smiley after her name. And, <laughs> and it's a great privilege to have you here, Aya. It's a privilege to be it's, here. Uh, she's a very senior monastic and extremely well trained through Amravati and Chithurst monasteries before taking bhikkhuni ordination in America in uh, 2011 and uh, basically leading with some other bhikkhunis the Aloka Vihara in uh, California. And now I feel a little bit more nomadic. Wow, nomadic yes. yes, which is very nice. Which is wonderful and uh, open to all kind of possibilities. And uh, Ayo Nandabodi is also one of our assistant advisors on Anukampa project. So if I'm kind of in doubt about anything, specifically things that sometimes my venerated Ajahn Brahm can't necessarily understand, not being a bhikkhuni, then <laughs> um, Ayo Nandabodi has tons and tons of uh, insight and training and wisdom to share. So she's really a rock, actually, for me and for the whole project. So it's a real honor to, to have her lead the metta this morning. Um, so it'll be mostly meditation and she'll say a few words about how, what she's going to do and then lead you in some guided metta meditation. So I'm very happy to be able to join in. So thank you very much <laughs> and uh, enjoy your, your time. Thank you. <clears throat> So metta, metta meditation is such an important part of the practice. Uh, you know, we can so easily kind of get small and tight or anxious and, and the, or, or lost in our thoughts, worries, plans, hopes, you know, memories. And the metta practice brings us away from the thoughts. It brings us on that very important journey from the head to the heart, essential. Mm -hmm. So um, I have met people, I mostly when I was in America, actually, but I did meet and quite a number of people who were practicing metta in their head. Who would practice, you know, they would say these lovely phrases and these really nice intentions, but it wasn't actually landing in the heart. So it's very, even that's better, you know, it's better to have wholesome thoughts than, than unwholesome wholesome thoughts. The real metta practice is, it is in the heart center. It is an energetic, direct experience. It's a, it's a transformation of the heart. And it helps us to, uh, to kind of undo the, the strong story of self, <clears throat> self and other. And it also helps to undo the, the attachment to the body, you know, me and mine. So it has this really powerful, uh, tangible, unraveling, experience or, or undoing experience when you really practice it in the heart and as if we continue to cultivate it so if you just do it a little bit here and there it's good but if you continue to cultivate metta it will actually transform your being it, it's just it even transforms on a cellular level in the body healing and it's and it becomes like a kind of an energy field that's always with you that others will will pick up on animals and plants and people will notice it and it'll be you'll you'll you start to create a field of metta so this is the potential but it takes a bit of work and there are many ways that we can practice metta so there are many different systems that have been developed over the years and I've used many different ways, the phrases of, of uh, remembering, you know, may I be well, may all beings be well, is one way, very simple way. As long as it comes down into the actual intention in the heart, not just in the head. And then the, the practices um, in relation to different people, you know, loved ones and uh, people we don't know, people who are, we're afraid of or who we consider enemies. This is a really good workout for the heart to do that practice. Um, and so I've done many different practices over the years, 
And the one that I've found really, I, um, I guess the one I sort of settle with now, the one that feels most resonant for me, is the radiant practice of metta, of, of all the Brahma Viharas. And this is um, from the suttas, actually. So there's a, we used to, when I lived in Amravati, we used to chant this chant, I will abide pervading one quarter with a heart imbued with loving kindness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself, I will abide pervading the all-encompassing world with a heart imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. And then going through the other Brahma Viharas. So this comes from the suttas, and this is the Buddha's instruction for practicing metta. And I didn't ever really understand what it meant, I must admit, in terms of this quarter and that quarter. And it's like, what are these quarters that he talks about? So fortunately, uh, some years later, I was uh, able to learn the practice of radiating metta in this way. So when it talks about the quarters, it's speaking about radiating generating that quality of metta and radiating it out in front of you. Just like a, you can imagine like the, the dial of a clock going around one quarter and it's just, so that whole quarter is just radiating metta and it carries on going around another quarter radiating metta and it carries on around, all the way around. So, every, so all around you, metta is being radiated and then above, radiating metta and below, down into the ground, into all the creatures of the earth radiating metta. So then it becomes like a sphere of metta radiating. So this is the, the practice that I'd like to bring to you today. So find a posture for meditation that's comfortable enough, that brings a sense of alertness, openness and relaxation. And just take a moment to find your posture that you'll sustain for these next 50 minutes. So begin by just feeling your body in contact with the seat, with the ground beneath you. Allowing yourself to fully take this seat, fully be here not leaning forward into the future, not wandering back into the past, but just being fully embodied right here, right now. Be aware of your breath, just one or two breaths and take a deep breath if you like. You're bringing your attention, reining it in. You're bringing it from all of the things that pull your attention outwards. And you're reining your attention in. So this body, this breath, this moment. And now I'd like to invite you to bring attention to your heart center. And if it's helpful, you can just touch your heart center. You can put your hand there. It's right at the middle of your chest. And just see what you find there. You know, is, is your heart open? Bright. Some people have written how they feel bright and happy this morning. Some people have written about feeling anxious. Some people might feel heavy. So just see where do you where are you beginning? So you don't have to judge what you find. You just have to know it. Is the heart open and bright, 
uplifted? Is it trembling? Is it heavy? Is it a bit sleepy? Is there just a sense of numbness? You know, whatever you find, just know that. Just as it is. And as you breathe, breathe into your heart center. So I like to think of, you know, as we, as we breathe in, all well, that air, that nourishing air that's giving us life is coming into the chest areas, making space around the heart. It's just a perception that helps to, uh, for me, it helps me to connect with and open the heart center. So as you're breathing in, you're inviting your attention to come down into the heart center. Not thinking about the heart, but being in the heart. And just bring to mind someone or somewhere or some creature that makes your heart smile. Might be a child or a, a, a favorite animal or a, a place or a dear, a dear one, a grandparent. And just bring them to mind and let them rest there in your heart and make your, the, just the, the heart naturally smiles and opens. So they don't have to work too hard. They're helping us. Just keeping that image in the heart center, allowing your heart to open around that image that perception. And with each breath, you can invite it to open a little more. So we're consciously generating the quality of metta, friendliness, benevolence, warmth, acceptance. And that quality of metta, it kind of pushes aside. It, it, it kind of takes the space, it takes center stage. So all of the worries and the niggles and the, and the rocks and the concerns get pushed to the side. So taking care of this quality of metta, breath by breath, moment by moment. And as you breathe in, you can bring more clarity, more energy to the metta, more fuel. And as you breathe out, I'd like to invite you to let that metta radiate through your body from the heart center. Letting go of the image now, and just being with the quality of metta. Inviting the metta to radiate in all directions. So it can be when we do this, it's, it needs a little more help. It stays rather small. 
So just as I described in the beginning before we set, I'd like to invite you to particularly pay attention to the quarter in front of you, the space in front of you. As you breathe in, bringing energy to the metta in your heart. As you breathe out, let it radiate out in front of you. Letting it flow. Not taking issue with how far it goes, whether it's good enough or not, just letting it open and radiate out in front of you. And letting it touch whatever is in front of you, anyone, anything. And now expanding that awareness to like sweeping it around to the right so that the metta is really focused in front of you and to the right of you. Again, touching and blessing anyone, anything that it meets. And now continuing that sweep around behind you. So the metta is still radiating in front of you, to the right, and also behind you. Unconditionally, unafraid. Unlimited, not limiting it. And then bring it round to the left, sweeping all the way around. But it comes back to where it began. And you have this radiance all around you. Coming through you from your heart center. All around. Reaching as far as it wants to go. Not limited, not bound free to radiate in all directions. And now letting that, not, not losing that quality, keeping that going. Also pay attention to the space above you from the heart center upwards and outwards. Radiating up through your body, out into the world. And below, radiating down through your body and down into the earth. Metta is not limited by physical objects. It resonates through everything. So this quality of metta is radiating around, above and below in one big sphere, one big ball of metta, beginning at your heart center. And it's unlimited. It doesn't have to be limited by anything. It's just free to radiate out, warm, bright, loving, benevolent. Radiating for the benefit of all beings.
And if you're finding it hard to connect with the quality of metta, just remember that everyone on the call today, at least some of us will be radiating metta right now. So you can take it in from others to get you started if you need to. And if you've already got it going, just keep taking care of that source of metta at the heart center. I will abide, pervading the all-encompassing world with a heart imbued with metta.
So with each breath, we stay connected with the heart center and the radiant metta. Just letting it spread out as far as it wants to go.
If you find that your attention wanders, start thinking about other things. What is more important right now? And generating some love and some light, warmth, benevolence in your own being, in your body and mind and in the world. So needed. In this radiant practice, we're not thinking about this person or that person. We're just letting that quality radiate for the benefit of all beings. And coming back to this being, the one, you, your own body and mind. Letting that metta resonate throughout every cell of your body. Letting it be present in your heart, just as it is, not yet fully enlightened, just like this. And remembering that with each breath is an opportunity to connect with this quality of metta, benevolence, friendliness, warmth, brightness. So we have about 10 minutes post meditation and hopefully you know, can keep a little bit of that meta going, keep it, take care of it. It's, it is a, it is an, it is a force. It is an energy and, uh, it likes to reside in the heart. So as we go into the, I'd like to invite any questions or comments about metta practice, specifically about metta practice. It can be about this particular practice or your practice in general, and including if you find it absolutely impossible, that's also absolutely fine. So I'd like to uh, invite, yes, and Ayachanda is going to pop in. <laughs> Uh, just for the sake of anyone new, if you want to ask your question privately, you can do so in the chat. Otherwise, only your voice will be recorded. You can raise your virtual hand. Only your voice will be on the recording. But it's very nice for people to hear that if you feel able. Yes, please. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. 
And uh, <clears throat> don't be shy to speak up. I'm shy and I just sat there for 50 minutes talking to you all. I don't know most of you, so you can be brave. I just wanted to say thank you so much, Aya. It's so lovely to see you. Um, it was I was so looking forward to this session uh, and uh, seeing you again. And uh, during the whole session, my heart was a bit dead. And yet I could be kind to that. So mm. that made me, I just thought, you know, it's actually OK. And I also just wanted to what I actually did was I just tried to be very receptive. And I remember you did a guided meditation, which was very beautiful. You said some time ago, uh, I think it was on this is this group where you said breathe it, you know, somewhere in the world there are enlightened beings radiating. And I and when you did that at that time in that meditation, I was thinking I should be giving out matter. I shouldn't be receiving it. And there's something very humbling mm -hmm. I, about receiving rather than giving out. I, and I thought, yeah, let me be very humble and receive this. It's actually it's actually OK. It's actually, mm -hmm. it's actually all good enough just to be here. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a form of of, of 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 meta that I find very valuable. You know, sometimes the heart's radiant, sometimes it's just a bit dead, mm -hmm. and we just have to be kind to whatever is there internally and externally. So that's my little reflection, and so much gratitude to you. Thank you, Shirley. So lovely to see you. I've known Shirley since I began the monastic life. It's <laughs> very lovely. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's really important that, you know, it is a, it is receiving, it is both receiving and giving. And, you know, when I when I did go through a period of time of practicing, trying to practice metta, where it was like, come on, you should be pumping it out, you know, for all beings and all the devas and all other hell beings. And, you know, and then I was just exhausted because it's, it's coming from the wrong place. Because metta isn't personal, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a quality. And yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, it's, it's actually valuable to check in and find like, actually, my heart feels a bit dead right now. And then part of that is knowing, OK, I need to take better care of my heart. It needs, it needs to be a little bit more nourished and cared for and because it, it changes all the time. Thank you, Shelley. Lovely to see you. So it's it's awesome. There's also questions there, but yes. we'll get to it on I just actually just went to somebody ask which sutta is that? From. It's actually many, many places in the suttas. If you look through the suttas, you'll find that the four Brahma Viharas repeated again and again with that formula. So it's many suttas. Just have to look. Yvonne. There are two chat, uh, uh, two questions oh. in the chat. Okay, oh, okay. please. I'm sorry. Um, really? oh, so when you I... distribute metta, do you have anything in particular you think of? Well, I actually, you know, there's this, <clears throat> you know, in the beginning, when we first start to generate meta in the heart, usually we need to think of something, someone, somewhere, something that will get that quality going. So that's why I was saying, think of somebody, bring to heart some, someone or something or somewhere that makes you sm makes your heart smile, because you've got to kind of get it started. But if you just stay with that, you don't want to be thinking during meta. If you're up here, you're missing the main practice, you want to be right down here in the heart so you can so to get the quality started in this radiant practice you might think of someone dear to you someone you love someone that's very simple straightforward that just brings that quality of smiling of the heart smiling and then once it's there once you've got that generated and going you don't need to keep thinking of people places it's it is one practice is to think of people who are dear to you people think of people who are um, you know, you don't know so well, but think of people who you don't, who you have difficulty with. That is a, a practice that was, in some ways, it's kind of a system that was formed later. You won't find that in the suttas as such. But this is a very simple practice. And one of the reasons I really like this practice is it kind of doesn't get involved with me and you and how you are and what my relationship with you is. It's just the quality of metta radiating for the benefit of all beings. 
So instead of thinking, what I would do is use the breath to keep connected to the heart center and just keep putting attention on the metta. You're not thinking about the metta, you're not thinking about people, you're just radiating that metta for the benefit of all beings. And the other question, let me see. I never thought metta is bright too, which is really lovely. Yes, I always experience it as a brightness. At the beginning, my heart area seemed quite heavy and closed and somehow felt a bit painful, yes. This seems, this seems to have been for a while for me, yet my body feels really relaxed. I guess I just need to carry on, yes. Sometimes you just need to take in, as Shirley was saying, take in the metta, heal the heart. It will, you know, the heart wants to be open and radiant. It's its natural state, actually. So, yeah, sometimes it needs a little healing and care, attention. And then another mention, I struggle recently to keep the metta for me, myself, as I have a bit, as I've been a bit low on love energy. Again, this practice of metta, that one of the sweet things about it is you don't have to think about yourself. You know, because sometimes it is hard to have metta for ourselves, you know, because th we're right here with ourselves, you know, we see all the things that are wrong and that's silly and should be different and we should know better by now. You know, we, we can be very hard judges inside. Other people see it's quite different often from the outside, but what we see in, inside, and we tend to think that's the real me, you know, all of this, but actually none of it is the real me. So the beautiful, um, one of the beautiful aspects of this practice is you are just with that energy of metta and you're just letting it radiate so it's going through your body your mind and it's not you're not getting into the details of i should i shouldn't i am i'm not i'm worthy i'm unworthy all of that it sort of bypasses all that it just it just goes directly to the quality of metta it radiates and it literally does affect every cell in your body so yeah, keep taking care of your heart. It's so important. And, and don't, you know, don't judge it if it's a bit closed down or then, then that just means you need a bit more, you need more patience, more kindness, more, more care, you know. I will unmute uh, Bless you, Aya and uh, Venerable Chanda. And I just wanted to say, you know, it's been a while since I could get to the group. It's a, exactly a year since my beloved Johnny died. So it's been a journey. But the minute I came onto these screens and saw these lovely people I've practiced with, I could just feel the meta. Whoa. And uh, I have to say that I have never heard this particular version and it absolutely resonated with me because I'm a very visual person and I'm very good if I can do gestures mm -hmm. and the body helps so I was having to lie down for this one and I was making hand gestures to the quarters which helped for me to embody it start of, instead of getting in my head so many blessings to you all and to the monastics in the little vihara mm -hmm. and uh, lovely to see you and uh, my teacher, Ty, often says, just smile all the time to people in the street and you radiate. <laughs> so, so it is a practice I like to do and say hello to people as I walk down the street. Blessings to everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. Beautiful. Yes. Let's get the so we're going, to, we're going to all say goodbye and also our two guests, if they would like to come. So... Benny Bolipeka and myself and uh, yeah, all the very, very best. And again, thank you very much to Aya for being here. You can come behind us maybe and they can wave goodbye. We have Udara uh, just behind myself and Aya and Bodhi and uh, Carolina between Benny Bolipeka and Aya and Bodhi. So uh, some of you will know Carolina actually from Zoom. So it's a very happy little monastery at the moment. Full of uh, full of monastics, which is amazing for me to yeah practitioners in general, but especially monastics, which I hadn't really seen for many years. So it's uh feels very special. Yeah. So uh, I think the next meta session is on the twenty sixth. Is that right? You can look at it online. It'll be probably myself doing that one, and. Uh, 
we don't have Friday night sort of discussions for the next couple of weeks because I, um, Ajan Gramali is going to be in England. So there's still places if you want to register for any of his talks and events. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks after that, I guess, or maybe we'll see you at some of the events. So please take care of your hearts. And uh, yeah, take care. We'll unmute you as usual now and you can wave goodbye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>